what we're titling this is the catching away. Because there's a lot of misinformation out there. And there's people saying, you know, he's delayed his coming. And there's people saying there isn't going to be a rapture. And why do you need to get caught away? And revelation already happened, so why are you <laughs> waiting for it to come? And there's just a lot of stuff out there. And I don't want to convince you with great swelling words. I just want to read some scriptures to you in a particular order and comment a few things. So you can turn to these. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 13, it's the place to start. Because here's the thing. Let me explain to you briefly what catching, why I call it catching away. Because that's the word in the King James Bible. If you go back to the Latin Vulgate version, guess what the word is? Rapturo. Hence, people call it the rapture. People will say to you, they're so smart, you know. The word rapture is not in the Bible. It is in Latin. <laughs> okay? I mean, that's what it is. So when we say the rapture, we're just saying catching away in Latin. Latin scholar, is that right? That's what we're saying. So you can call it the rapture if you want, but it helps to know that really that's why I now call it the catching away. Because that's, they can find that in the Bible and it makes people feel better. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. They just, you know, ignorance. Because 1 Thessalonians 4.13 says this, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. So the problem here he's addressing is there's people that are in Christ, they died. But I thought we were all going to live forever. You know, there's a little confusion. Don't sorrow. I'm going to explain this to you so you don't sorrow. Even as others that have no hope. There's a lot of people that have no hope. You know, eat, drink, be merry, tomorrow you're going to die type of no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, hello, we believe that, right? We all know that that's true. Yeah. If there, Paul said, if there's no resurrection, then you're yet in your sins and it's over. So just forget it. There has to be a resurrection, yeah. right? So if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. So that's, that's like double intense this is God's word, right? It's in the Bible and it says, by the word of the Lord, I'm telling you this. That we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord. So let's notice something. We. Does Paul include himself? Yes. Did he make it? No, no apparently not. Did he know he wasn't going to make it? No. no, apparently he thought it was very possible, if not even likely, that he'd be one of those people that would remain. Okay? I mean, just that's what he says here. I mean, yeah, but no, but he says, we which are alive and remain. We which are alive. He was alive at that time. So at that time, it was very possible he could still be alive when this happened. Yeah. Now, it turns out that he's not. I could be alive when this happens. Yeah. And I may not. I, who knows? But I just, it's, just point this out. We which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or go before them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So they shall be caught up together. Rapturo. Okay, that's where it comes from. So this scripture is where the whole concept of a rapturo is it comes from. So there is one. Now, we haven't defined exactly what it is or how it works or anything, but we know that there's going to come a day when the Lord's going to come and he's going to meet in the air all the dead in Christ already, plus those that are alive and remain unto his coming, and he's going to catch them up into the air. Right? You can't deny it. Don't tell me it isn't going to happen. At this point, we can argue about where it is, how it's going to work. You know, we can, we can talk about a lot of things that aren't necessarily defined here. But don't ever tell me it's not going to happen. Because it's clearly stated. Got it? Yeah. So that's step one. You know, somebody tells you there's going to be no, I, there's no rapture. You're, you know, you're living in the 1970s or something. <laughs> okay? Um, 
It was 1 Corinthians 15, by the way, 17, where he said, if Christ is not raised, then you're yet in your sins, and there's no hope. All right? We read in 2 Peter, we read the part in 2 Peter where he tells us to be watchful. He tells us to be watching. What are we watching for? He's, he's telling us to be watchful for what? The, the soon return. Okay? So he wants us to be, to be aware of it. So let me move back. I have to go to the next one. So that's, a much, it's, that's a piece out of a much longer post that I wrote. And it's just I have it all in here, so it's easy for me to just get to it all. And um, so do that. So then we want to talk about something else that he mentioned in 2 Peter. For the day of the Lord is going to come like a thief in the night. Right? Whoa. That must be the rapture. Right? It's going to happen so instantaneously. Well, that's what people did in the 1970s. They made the thief in the night and the rapture the same thing. They're not. So I'm going to prove to you why that's not what we talked about. Because notice what happened in the catching away. Jesus came and all the dead in Christ and all that were alive and remain of the people in Christ were caught up together. Right? The voice of an archangel Yes. Okay, so Matthew 24 through 25, Luke 12, Mark 13. We're not gonna, I'm not going to read those that quite that way. Um, you hear this. This is what Jesus says in those places. If you read those places and you understand, he says, no man knows the day or the hour. Okay, it's important. No man knows. So if I give you a day, look, the rapture is happening three weeks from Sunday. Got it? I'm clueless. I don't know. Okay? Um, the coming of the Lord of the thief of the night is found in 1 Thessalonians 5.2. It's also found in 1 Peter 4.15, the day of the Lord. What did I tell you about the day of the Lord when we read about it in 2 Peter? It's a day of judgment. It's a day of judgment. Okay? And that day is what's coming as a thief in the night. That's the day. It's coming. So is the catching away part of that day because right now we don't really know for sure okay so the day of the lord is a day and we're going to talk about this more it's a day of wrath you know i love there's one version of the bible on video where the john the baptist says who warns you to flee from the coming wrath and just the way the guy says it it's like really good and um, i've just always loved that one because, you know, in the King James says, from the wrath that is to come, just doesn't do it the same way as the way that guy, the, the quote they were using. But, I mean, there's a coming wrath, a wrath, as this guy says. It's coming. There's, and Second Peter was just filled with, there's a judgment day coming. It's sure. It's not lingering. It's not slumbering. It's not slack. In fulfilling the promise. It's coming. The day of the Lord's going to come. I mean, it's just, it's very clear. It's trumpeting out to us. So in, um, in um, 1 Thessalonians 5, so it's about, I, I forget, about 2 or 3. I don't have the number in here, but you can find it quickly. It says, but you, brethren, in chapter 5, it's chapter 5, verse 4, but you, brethren, are not in darkness. You're not in darkness. That that day should overtake you as a thief. So wait a minute now. That day is coming like a thief in the night, and he just told us you are not in darkness, that that day would overtake you as a thief. How is that going to happen? Because I don't know what day it is. So if I'm here, it's going to overtake me like a thief as everybody else. Doesn't that seem reasonable? Because no man knows the day or the hour, yet he's telling me that I'm not in darkness, that that day should overtake me as a thief. So does that mean I get to know the hour? The the or the day? No. Apparently not. So what does it mean? So let's read the rest of it. You are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. See, remember, one of, the, one of the qualities of the people of God is they do what? They watch. Okay? They're always expecting. They're always ready. 
They're not like those evil servants who when they said, well, the master's not here, let's, you know, mistreat all the servants and, and do all this stuff. We're not those people. We're always ready for his return. We know it could be any time. We act as if he's coming today every day. Does that mean he's coming today? Well, he didn't come yesterday, but I should have been yesterday acting like he was coming yesterday. In everything I do, just like when we tells us, if you're going to be working and you're going to be a servant and you're going to be doing stuff, don't be an eye pleaser. Don't be a man pleaser. Don't do stuff because somebody's watching you. Do it as unto the Lord because the Lord is always watching you. Amen. Right? So the same thing here. We don't sleep as do others. Let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. They that are drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and foreign helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not obtained, appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're not appointed to wrath. But we just said in 2 Peter that the day of the Lord is when the day of the wrath of God shows up. You're not appointed to that day. And in fact, since you're not in the darkness, that day is not going to overtake you as a thief. Why? Why? So we're going to read some more. Um, I could read all of this, but let me just go back because I'm trying to stick with just the scripture on the whole subject. So the next post was called The Coming Raw. <laughs> Matthew 3 7 and Luke 3 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he, John the Baptist, said unto them, A generation of vipers who has warned you to flee from the coming wrath. He was very aware there's a coming wrath of God. He knew it. And he was warning them about it. Okay? So here's some other scriptures. Um, John 3, 36. He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. He that believes not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. In Romans 2, 5. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Those that refuse to repent, go about seeking their own righteousness, those kind of people, they're treasuring up wrath unto the day of wrath. They're going to obtain a lot of wrath. In Ephesians 5, 6, he declares, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things comes the wrath of God upon all the righteous of God. The, the children of disobedience. Children of disobedience. So the unbeliever, the unrepentant, the disobedient, all groups that get to obtain the wrath instead of salvation. So you don't want to be any of those, right? Pretty amazing. So here's some more Romans. Much more than, Romans 5, 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Oh, hey, there's a salvation from wrath. To the Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 1.10, to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. And 1 Thessalonians 5.9, God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation. So you got more than one witness here. It's extremely clear. There is a dichotomy, as I always call it. It's a separating into two. There's those that obtain salvation and those that obtain wrath. Simple. Those that are saved, those that are damned. Those that believe, those that do not believe. Those that do righteousness, those that do evil. It's, it's, it's the group. They get all the, their stuff over here, and we get to have all our stuff over here. That's, that's what it is. So that's who we are. And we were told that the day would not get us like a thief. It isn't going to happen. But yet, there's a swift and sure judgment coming. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 14 says this, The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hastes greatly. I mean, Zephaniah wrote this. That's a lot of years back, okay, by our estimation. 
Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. That's the day of the Lord. That's pretty, it's pretty awful. And then the ultimate one is Revelation chapter 6, verse 16. He said to the mountains and rocks, this is the people that are left, the people that are there on whom this wrath is coming. Fall on us to the rocks and the mountains and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? So there's a day of the Lord coming that doesn't slumber, it doesn't linger, it's not slack, God's promised, it's hastening, it's coming with great haste according to Zephaniah. That day is coming, the day of the Lord, a day of wrath and it will come upon the earth like a thief in the night. Because they will not expect it. They will think that everything will continue as it always has. And suddenly it will be very different. This is one reason why I am absolutely positively certain that these things have not yet been fulfilled. Because when they happen, there will be a complete end made. And for people to start arguing that it all happened in the first century, and that all of Revelation is typifying you know, the seven hills of Rome and it all happened in the Roman Empire and it's all already been fulfilled except for just the last little part, I just will not uphold it because of this. When you read it, that language is clear. There will be such an incredible wrath of God that the elements will melt with the fervent heat. Everything will be destroyed. Everything. Completely. Okay, so last thing on this section. Jude 20, but you, beloved, but you, beloved, I always like to finish with something positive. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And that's what we're looking for. When we're being watchful, that's what we're looking for. What's the mercy of God? He's going to pull us out before the wrath. That's really what it is. So let me explain how it works. Okay. The wrath of God that's coming, the end of all things that's coming, is a day appointed for the unrighteous. So you that walk in the day, that day will not overtake you as a thief in the night. Because you will be caught away. You will be removed. You will be taken up to meet him in the air. Because you're not appointed to wrath. That's simply what the catching way is all about. Very simple. You can explain that to anybody. It's not hard. We don't have to get into a whole lot of crazy gymnastics with how this fits and that fits. It's just very simple. The day of the Lord and the catching way are not the same thing. And you don't want to be here for the day of the Lord, and you've not been appointed to it. So, if, you know, there's a whole other thing to talk about in terms of timelines. If I stood here today and told you that everything is ready for the revelation to be fulfilled, I would have a hard time proving it to myself. Because there are just so many things that have to happen. But how long does it take? If we the hinderer of lawlessness, as it's said in Thessalonians. If we are removed, there is nothing on the earth to hold back the darkness. There's nothing on the, back, on the earth to hold back the evil. So when we are caught away, I don't know when that'll be. Will it be three days before the things of Revelation happen? Will it be three months, three years, 300 years? I don't have any idea. It, you get the sense that it just follows one after another, but you get that sense about a lot of things it doesn't work that way. So I like to put it this way. I am watching every day for the mercy of the Lord and His soon return because He told me to. And I may go my whole life and, hit, and the catching away does not happen and I may die in Jesus Christ and be buried and my body turned to dust before it comes. But I have a promise that I will be resurrected 
and caught up with him in the air when that day comes. And that's what we are hastening towards and watching for and we're ready for because we know his judgment is coming. It's like the psalmist said, said, I look at it and I'm going, the righteous, are more, the righteous are less blessed than the wicked. The wicked got everything. They got more money. They got more blessing. They got more laughter. They got more happiness. The righteous are afflicted and the wicked got everything. And then I went into the sanctuary of God and I understood their end. And now he felt sorry for the wicked because he recognized that this day of wrath is appointed. It's coming. Only the Father knows the day when he will say, to Jesus, now, go, it's full, it's ripe, it's time. I don't know when that will be. And I don't know how much time will happen between the catching away and when that will happen. How long will it take for the iniquity to reach the full point? I don't know. I, none of those things do I know. I imagine that the time is very short from the catching away to that. But I am never going to stop watching. Every single day, I am going to behave myself as if today is the day of judgment. Because your catching away, your end of this life could happen tonight. You could go to sleep and not wake up in the morning and be standing before the Lord. So every single day, be watching. Not with fanciful ideas of hoping for that day when we get to soar away with him, you know, not, but because you know that his return is promised and you are going to act and behave yourself with all diligence before him to be righteous with him, to stand believing him today. Yeah. Not tomorrow and not yesterday. Today, I'm going to believe him and I'm going to use the shield of faith to quench every fiery dart of the wicked, and I'm going to stand and I'm going to look at his word. I'm going to say right here, the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. 1 Peter 4, 7. Father, I'm going to be sober and watch unto prayer today. I'm going to do it. Father, I'm going to begin to talk to you and I'm going to begin to thank you. And today, I'm going to obtain salvation. Today, I'm going to receive all that you have for me today. Today, I'm going to walk as the righteousness of God in Christ. Today, I'm going to walk with all thanksgiving and all blessing and all glory. Today, 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 today. And this is what I'm going to do tomorrow when it becomes today, if tomorrow ever gets here. So last, I want to read that 1 Thessalonians 5 again. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. So that is what I was trying to do, was the quick, simple version, scripture only. What does the Bible say about the catching away? Because we don't have to be people that write a 40-chapter book on the catching away. We don't have to argue about what was the thought in the second century and what was the thought in the fourth century and which, which scholar of the Bible believed that one and which believed another one. You, you know, you can do all that if you want. You can go study all that if you want. Just be careful that you get yourself back grounded in the Word of God. But for us, we have very clear, simple cannot be denied admonitions. The day of the Lord is coming and it's important for us to know it. The judgment is coming. It's important for us to know it. And we need to be watchful all the time and we're not appointed to wrath and it's a day of wrath and we're going to be caught up together with him whether we live or whether we die in Christ. Got it? Does everybody see that? Yes. It, you can't argue with that. There is no way that you could, you could take what we just said and argue with that. We can fuss around the margins, discuss times and events, look at all kinds of different things. There's a lot said about the, the rapture or the catching away, much of which might be correct. But what we just talked about is absolutely correct. That day is not going to catch me as a thief in the night because I won't be here. If I leave a day before it happens or a hundred years before it happens, if I die or if I live till that day, it doesn't matter. I will not be here. I am not appointed to wrath because I've been saved from wrath through Christ Jesus, my Lord, who did everything for me. Got it? Everybody hear that? All right.
Amen. Thank you, Lord. Make it real. So that's it. Praise God. Praise the Lord.